Tonight on Q2, a shopping trip gone wrong. A Billings business in hot water as some claim they violated the Americans with Disabilities Act. I can't support a business that's not going to support the disabled. But the owner claims there's more to the story. It's about the stroller, not about the children. Plus, giving back in life and death. To the loving, caring little girl who put her friends above her friends and her sisters. She loved being a big sister. A Levina High School student is still making a difference in the lives of others, even after her death, as hundreds prepare to honor her. And on the move. All of a sudden here, I've got hope that you know, I might actually be able to stay here. Nearly 100 Amish joined forces to help a man who lost his home in the historic 2022 floods. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. First tonight, an ordinary shopping trip takes an unexpected turn. What happened in a Billings business is taking social media by storm. As our Charlie Kleps reports, a dispute over a stroller has turned into a dispute about a possible violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. That argument all started with this, a simple stroller which Stones and Bones wouldn't allow inside their store. And that turned into a heated social media debate with one major question in mind. Is this a violation of the ADA? It's very frustrating. Life for a person with disabilities isn't easy. It's pretty difficult. It's something Laurel resident Kristen Jenkins knows all too well. Both she and her son have autism, something she says makes routine things like grocery shopping extremely difficult. Especially with, like I said, with the service dogs, it's quite more difficult because people, you know, want to touch, want to feel. Her struggles were recently felt by another Billings woman who anonymously posted to Facebook complaining about her experience at a local store called Stones and Bones. I saw that and I just, I couldn't just scroll away. It's like, you know, I have my son that's the same way. The post claimed the business didn't let their autistic daughter into the store because of her stroller, something the owner of the store doesn't dispute. We've had large expensive items strolled out the door in strollers. Crystal Hamilton says her business's no stroller policy has been in effect for three years and is clearly posted on the door. The goal? To stop shoplifters. Why should we suffer loss? You know, why can't we protect ourselves from theft and shoplifting? What's less clear is whether that policy may be a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Strollers and wheelchairs are very similar but they are not the same. Carlos Harmario is the executive director of Lyft, an organization that advocates for disabled residents. He says a stroller would fall under the ADA if it's being used as a mobility device. They are preventing that uh, individual on the stroll from living life to the fullest. However, Hamilton argues this surveillance video proves that wasn't the case. It's not a mobility device, it's a restraint device. The child walks into the store on her own and Hamilton claims the family never mentioned a disability. She walked in just fine and her mother stated that they needed to put her in the stroller to keep her from touching things. While she doesn't plan on changing the policy, Hamilton does regret her reaction online. I was angry about the the one star review. My response was not professional. I, I could have had a better response. Regardless, some are vowing not to return. I can't support a business that's not going to support the disabled. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. School is canceled tomorrow in the small towns of Levina and Broadview, but even so, Levina's high school gym will be packed as the small community more than triples in size. All to honor and remember a 17-year-old girl, Lily Whitcomb, a senior who passed away from cancer last month. As Arlena Hatta reports, she left quite a legacy. These bracelets were made from Levina High senior Lily Whitcomb before she passed away from cancer last month. The bright 17-year-old made it her mission to help others despite her tumultuous medical journey. She gritted her teeth and said, I'm serving it. I'm serving overhand. <laughs> I'm going to do it. This is how many say they'll remember 17-year-old Lily Whitcomb. She played volleyball the same way she lived her life, with grit and determination right up until the very end. We weren't sure exactly how strong she was going to be through all of this. And she, she proved that she could just 
hang in there with the best of them. Lily passed away last month after a four-year battle with a cancer called Ewing sarcoma. But even right after her death, Lily's mom says she's still giving back to those around her. Lily's wish actually was that instead of flowers being bought for her service, that people instead donate money to the Montana Hope Project. The Montana Hope Project fulfills the wishes of Montana kids who suffer from a terminal, critical, or chronic illness. I was super inspired that someone who was going through something so hard could like give back to other people. 19-year-old McKenna Harmon had known Lily since preschool. She watched as Lily would make these pieces of jewelry, donating all the proceeds. She even did stuff for someone else who was going through cancer at the same time. She made the sticker out there for someone over in Broadview who had cancer, and she was selling bracelets then for him, too. One of Lily's sisters has taken over her mission and will continue to make bracelets, keeping her sister's memory alive. And I would wager that this goes Goes farther than Levina or Broadview. She has lots of people that she knew along this valley that are also feeling the same way we are. Kelly Schwer taught Lily in preschool and middle school and knows Levina's gym will be packed with hundreds for her funeral Thursday. From here on out, it will be day by day. I think that the students around us will heal, but it might take some time. A young girl dearly missed, but still inspiring those she leaves behind. The big thing to Lily was her faith. That's what kept her going, was her faith and always knowing that there's always hope in every situation. In Levina, Alina Howder, MTN News. It's a picture perfect spring day outside. Temperatures climbing into the 70s today, and we could even threaten a record high tomorrow. But the bigger story it may be a wet weekend. With more on that, here's our chief meteorologist, Ed McIntosh. Here's a look at the Stockman Bank weather cam as that picture perfect scene that Andrea was talking about brought us temperatures up into the 70s today. 75, the warmest we've seen in Billings so far, but we also had a little bit of a wind that went along with that into the afternoon. And now we see a contrast in the temperatures. 70s from Billings off to the Eastern Plains. 75 for you in Miles City. 76, Sheridan. 71 in Warland. And up mid to upper 60s from uh, Cody up towards Livingston. But 50s, mid 60s across western Montana, where we're starting to see some showers move in. Now, this isn't going to be the big weather maker. That's going to come as we start getting into the weekend. But even now, we're starting to see at least some sprinkles and showers, and a little rumble of thunder up around Harleton. More on the weather coming up. Well, here's something you don't often see a building being literally lifted off the ground and moved across a property. This happened in Pennsylvania, but a similar scene will play out this weekend in Park City as a group of 70 Amish and more than 100 volunteers come to the rescue of a Montana man who lost his home in those floods of 2022. Our David Jay explains. A community is coming together to help move that building, which is about 1,200 square feet and weighs about 9,000 pounds, to take it from that slab over there and put it on this new slab. The man who owns this property lost his home on the Yellowstone River during the flooding a couple of years ago, and this has been a big boost, all this help that he's getting to help keep his property. Saturday is moving day for Park City resident Mike Kinsey, but it won't resemble a move that most Montanans have ever seen. About 150 volunteers will physically pick up Kinsey's garage turn it and move it 100 feet to higher ground, a scene that will resemble this one in Pennsylvania. I felt defeated until uh, Nelson came into my life and started talking about doing this for cookies. Nelson Troyer is a member of the Amish community near Roberts and is a mastermind behind the project. And they, on the side they go to the truss. That way the, we don't lift the roof off of the wall. Troyer had been working on the neighbor's barn when Kinsey asked him if he could work on his garage. It's going to have Nelson tear it down. He just told me I, I can't, in my right mind, see it destroying that nice building. With a old fella that lost his house in the river, uh, why not reach out and help him? Kinsey lost his home during the flooding on the Yellowstone River in June of 2022. And he's still trying to recover. I've been here since 1977, like I told you, and uh, I'm buried in debt right now on this property, but I'm trying to stay here, trying to figure out a way to hang on to it and move back down here and live here. Troyer still may be looking for volunteers, 
and estimates about 156 can fit in the building in order to move it. You know, it's not one person doing it all, but it's uh, the community in general. A helping hand and an unconventional way of pitching in from a community that wants to help. Yeah, it's been a life-changing experience getting to know this guy. In Park City, David J, MTN News. The Montana Highway Patrol has a new man in charge. Kurt Sager was recently promoted by the Montana Department of Justice. Colonel Sager is 21 years with MHP, starting as a trooper in northeastern Montana, most recently serving as the interim head of the patrol. He also oversaw the relocation of the Montana Highway Patrol headquarters from Helena to Boulder. Previous MHP Colonel Steve Lavin retired from the position earlier this month. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, a perfect shot. That was pretty good. <laughs> you know, I never dreamed that it would, you know, develop into this. A young Rapple J girl already aiming high on the archery circuit. But coming up next, a failing grade. America's national parks coming up short when it comes to air quality. The story right after this.